You told me on the phone you don't like wandering as much as you used to. Don't worry. I'll take you where we need to go. And just this once, I'm asking you not to talk. It'll be easier for me to say what I have to say. There's a reason for every step of this walk. This walk is the story of you and me. <laughs> Funny how you got a room at this hotel again. This is where we met that summer 11 years ago. I'll meet you there at 7.45. Your I am said. No pressure if we're not into each other. You were waiting for me in the lobby. Upstairs? I nodded. You from New York? No, Antarctica. Step back to the edge of the sidewalk. Careful with your neck now. Look up. See the far left window, top floor? That's where you stood smoking after the first time we made love. If only we could declare an end to endings, you said. I had no idea what you meant. Look to the left of the hotel. That cross street you see is Robson. Let's walk straight towards it like we did that first night. I've never done this before, you know, taking a walk with the guy I've just shagged. Not that I don't like walking. I walk all the time in New York, but it's alone time for me. I never walk with friends. But this'll be fun, walking with you, because in your orange shirt, you look like a better, happier St. Sebastian. Frank O'Hara. Impressive. You were here for that conference, remember? You'd just about finished your PhD. You were only four years my senior, but I felt like a baby, a bumpkin. A manly, worldly New Yorker strutting down Richard Street with me. When we hit this corner, I said to you, I'm nervous, remember? Having sex with you was nothing compared to how naked I felt just walking with you. Let's cross Robson, and then turn right and keep walking and wait at the next corner. Then we're going to walk down Seymour. That street has more relevance to our story. See this Japanese restaurant? That first night we dined at a similar place. It no longer exists. Keep walking, then wait at the corner of Seymour and Robson. I'm useless with these, you said, remember? Promptly requesting a fork. I smiled, kind of proud that at least in one respect, I was the greater. Bush, Gore, Jean Chrétien and his Bell's palsy. It's remarkable to me that you still sing God Save the Queen here. The Bloomsbury Group, sexual labels. I fall for the person, not the gender. Bach, Wittgenstein. Michel Foucault forever. Fuck boundaries, fuck limits. I'm nervous. I don't know where this is going. You don't have to know. It doesn't have to go anywhere. All we have is the here and now. So have some sake. Breathe. I breathed. And so did you. We breathed and drank and talked, then breathed and talked and walked and walked here, there, everywhere. Pretty city. Gorgeous, even. What it lacks in the linear, it makes up for in the spatial. We joined bodies again that night, the way we always joined bodies. The extremes of life conjoined in every touch, every gesture. Pain, pleasure, sadness, joy, fuck boundaries, fuck limits. The excess all embracing. Let's turn left onto Seymour. We're going to walk four blocks. You look anxious. More anxious than I've ever seen you. I always thought you were unflappable. Look across the street. Kai. Asian cuisine? Vancouver rules. Your second time here, we went to that tie joint in the village, remember? I wanted something from you then that you weren't ready to give me. I'm like the Baudelaire of New York. A flaneur, a wanderer, grabbing pleasure here and there, hungrily, in the moment. Like Heidegger's authentic man, accepting and embracing uncertainty, moving on without a thought. Because it's all horseshit in the end. After dinner that night, we walked together, yet not together. 
Half of you on the lookout for hotter shags, greener grass. This is what it must be like in New York, I told you. Abundance breeding bottomless hunger. People coming at you left, right, and center. You probably wouldn't even recognize half the people you slept with. I've got an eidetic memory, sweetie. I never forget a face. Plus, it's the people that make New York. Not the place, not the weather. And if it had one less person, it wouldn't be the same city. I guess you were implying that Vancouver's the opposite. That we're governed, constrained, defined by place, by mountains on one side, by water on the other, by greenery all about, by the fault lines below. Nature keeps us modest, respectful of boundaries and narratives, while your city's a fucking bubble, myopic and without limits. We're going to stop here at the corner for a bit. Look across the street. The Orpheum. Not exactly the Met, but it's one Vancouver site with a bona fide history. We have a history there. Your second trip to Vancouver. The bourgeoisie may have been our mortal enemy, but we couldn't resist Mahler's fifth. Face back towards Smythe Street. See the lamppost on your left? Lean against it and close your eyes. I want you to remember. Open your eyes. I could lie and say that it was at the Orpheum that I first went there about you. The truth is, I'd been going there from the moment we met. Let's cross Smythe and keep walking straight to Nelson. told me once. You're walking too fast. Aren't I supposed to be the New Yorker? You never respected my need for purpose, direction, showing up every two to three years when I was either attached or a reborn celibate. A day's notice you deemed sufficient. Once it was a few hours, remember? That night you changed flights here on your way to Hong Kong and we took each other like animals in the airport bathroom. <laughs> you felt guilty that I had to cab it, so you slipped $60 into my back pocket and said... This is only because I know you know you're not a meaningless fuck. But there are times when I feel like one. When you go to your cerebral extreme and you see me as pure math, as you would the exact distance between these parking meters or the market value of these luxury apartments above us. You're right, I said to you. I'm not a meaningless fuck. I look for meanings all the time, for stories with beginnings, middles, and ends. You could say I'm filling a void because I'm a historyless Vancouverite, and in Vancouver you start at the beginning, and it keeps on beginning. Daphne Mollet. You've read her. Sweet Dorothy, I read everything. <laughs> Keep walking straight and cross Nelson. We'll stop across from the penthouse. I can't get over how respectful Vancouver drivers are, you said once. But I actually feel more at risk here of being run over. It's creepy. Funny coming from you. 
I thought risk-taking was the name of your game. Like the morning you rented that motorbike and we zoomed over Granville Bridge at 105 miles per hour. Like the afternoon you screwed that man and his wife on Wreck Beach right in front of my eyes. Like the night you went out of your mind doing coke and meth at celebrities. How can I explain it? You thrill me like no other, but you baffle and scare me to no end. Let's stop. Look across the street. The penthouse. New York bigwigs like Satchmo and Sinatra played gigs there in the old days, but I remember it as the place my New York lover dragged me to teach me to appreciate the female form. I don't think you should shut yourself off completely from the other half of the human race. Women are fucking beautiful. They'll ignite a different part of your sensorium. That was your third trip here. The time I was going to tell you... I wanted to live with you. I said, you're special. I'm not special. I'm a smart guy and good in bed. That's all you actually mean. So please, don't go there. Just come here and kiss me. The street to the left of the penthouse is Helmkin. Let's walk straight towards it and stop when we get to the corner. Be patient. We're getting close. This isn't easy for me either. By the way, did you cab into town last night? Don't forget, you can take the Canada line to the airport. It's cute, you said the first time I took you on the Sky Train. I was scared to death last year the morning I landed in New York. I was broke and couldn't cab it. So I had to contend with the iconic marmoreal rapid transit system of New York City, a city I'd never visited and was scared of. Take the air train to Jamaica, and from there the Long Island Railroad to Penn Station. Your text said, I'll meet you at the 8th Avenue exit. I was sweating bricks on the train, paranoid about getting lost, mazophobia they call it, convinced I was going to drown in the insane, chaotic, concrete miasma that's your city. I love getting lost, you told me once. Because getting lost is like losing yourself. Ground wobbling, lights spinning, strange voices all around. To branch out of the confines of self and be one with chaos. I'm sorry. I'm too selfish. I want to feel safe. And still I'm wading through Penn Station at rush hour, nostrils flaring, hardly able to breathe, your city's colors engulfing me in some iridescent wash as I search frantically for the bespectacled man by the 8th Avenue exit. Hey, sexy. How you doing? Nice to see you. And just like that, in an instant, air... Stop when you hit the corner. I need to tell you this. Look to your right. Across the street, on the corner of Helmkin and Seymour, conveniently inostentatious, is the Gathering Place. A center for Vancouverites left behind by the system. I was a regular there six months ago when I had a nervous breakdown and couldn't work. I could feel the breakdown coming when I visited you in New York last year. That's why I was so standoffish. I wanted you, but was afraid of you. I needed boundaries, containment, and you weren't what the doctor ordered, but I went to New York nonetheless. I know you're dying to talk, but I still haven't said what I have to say. Face back towards Helmkin. We're going to cross the street and walk for just a bit more. Ahead of us, on our left, is a park. The park, where the story of this walk ends. The place we need to go. I can't think of another park quite like it in Canada. Smack in the center of urbanity. Enclosed by assorted verticals. It's, it's like the parks you find in Manhattan, especially Bryant Park, where we sipped coffee a couple of times when I visited you last year. Let's go in. You pick a seat. Okay. Here we go. The way it happened this morning, how you told me what I've waited 11 years to hear, was exactly as I dreamt it. 
You jetting in on a revelation, an epiphany, then waking me up with a phone call. I'm done. I'm through wandering. I'm tired of walking alone. But it's taken me 11 years to realize that we can't be together. My life's here. Yours is there. I like open spaces. You like crowds. And for my own sanity, I need limits. I can't embrace your extremes. And if I tried, my hold would be so tight that I'd kill what makes you you. But what I can embrace is this. The greatest lesson you taught me. That moments can stand on their own and don't need to go anywhere. Like when we're talking about Antonioni or Virginia Woolf or Charlie Parker. Or how we're both essentially insecure loners who compensate with book learning and sexual swagger. Or when we're sitting together. Just sitting. Exactly as we are now. This way it'll never end. The story of you and me. Because every time we come together, we start at the beginning. And it'll keep on beginning.